fire blight update. Fire blight controls in this year 2014 were largely insufficient. This is a Mac free tree that was hit hard with fire blight last year. I cleaned up what I thought was most of it. And you can see what we largely have here is shoot blight. You can see how the shoots are basically killed back to the main branch. There's no saving them. They're dead, dying. And whether this tree forms cankers, I don't know. I don't see cankers in the tree, but obviously the blight came from somewhere. And, you know, the more blight I'm seeing, the more I'm dealing with this, it seems like the blight largely comes from the tree itself. Obviously, it will spread from tree to tree. It will start in one tree and spread to another. But for my two cents, an outbreak like this comes out of this tree. Uh, there was some, let me see some fruit here. Again, this is a Mac-free apple tree. It blossomed lightly this year. Most of those blossoms early were up high and later down low. And I'm not sure what got me, but something in this tree got me. Obviously there was blight around and wow, what 50%, 40% of the shoots are infected and the tree is sick. So I'm in the process of making the decision now, but I think the decision, it is May 30th, it's late to graft, but I think I'm going to graft. I'm going to cut the tree off down there where you see the white paint and graft Liberty onto it. Now Liberty is susceptible to fire blight, but not to this degree. This is a freedom tree. Freedom is highly susceptible to fire blight in my orchard. Uh, I do have a canker on this tree that I missed in the winter time. It's ugly. And I don't know that you're going to be able to see it, but it's ugly. There's fruit on this tree. Not a whole lot, but there are some fruits. And I'm going to let it go this year, prune out the fire blight as I see it and then next year probably graft it over to a Liberty and perhaps change over all of these trees in this row one two three four five seven trees to Liberty here's Liberty apple a bug bitten for sure getting a lot of insects in the orchard and it's very difficult to spray when it's raining profusely hopefully the bug damage isn't too severe. Maybe you can see a little pocket of, I don't know if those are aphids. Look like little black aphids. But Liberty's got fruit, as usual. Liberty's a good tree. It does have fire blight. I'll try to get something down low. It's hard to see up high. I pruned out a couple of shoots off of this tree. Here's one right here. You can see this is shoot blight. I think Liberty's probably resistant to shoot blight. It's not immune. It doesn't get covered up in it, as in that Mac Free tree over there. But what you get with Liberty is it does not tend to form cankers. And cankers are where you'll find this reoccurring year after year in your tree. There's a little shoot blight right here. I'm yet to here if this was a bad blight year. I didn't think it was bad at blossom. It was cool. Didn't have a buildup of... There's a little bit of bug bite there. Curculio and I think sawflies after me now. I'm going to try to spray tonight right before dark if it looks like no more rain is coming. But Liberty's got a lot of fruit on it. And I think the shoot blight is going to affect a lot of trees. The blossom blight which is fire blight, will affect a lot of trees. But as far as that blight getting into the older wood, that three-year-old and four-year-old main trunk wood, I don't think Liberty is susceptible to that. It doesn't look like it to me. This is a Golden Delicious that 
have very few blooms on it this year. It bloomed pretty heavily last year, so golden tends to be a little bit biennial anyhow. It's got a few fruits. It does have some fire blight. Case in point. If I'm going to remove this stem, here's where your blight is. That's your canker. I don't know if you can see that wood right there. But that's where uh, that's where the the stem is girdling down there, and it's killing the top of portion. I'm kind of in the game now to prune all the way back. I'm I'm done messing with pruning back inches off of what I see stricken. I'm going way back. I don't think the consequences could get any higher. I don't think you could mess things up any higher, any worse than they are right now. Here's a red delicious. This tree stays in the orchard because it is fire blight resistant to a point. I pruned a few shoots off of this tree but not many. It's got a light crop on it this year. Enough that we'll pick some fruit. It's, uh, that is not blight damage. It's maybe a pruning wound. And here's the Jonathan tree that was sick like the Mac Free is this year. This tree was sick last year and I cut it off, left this stem to grow, grafted a Liberty onto here about a month ago, maybe a little longer, and it's put on about a foot of growth. Hopefully that remains strong, it should, it's got a lot of root under it. Get that up, we'll have a nice Liberty tree here in the future. So to change over all of these trees in this row to Liberty, I still haven't totally made that decision, but I can see in the future that could very well happen. But for the immediate future, I think Freedom's going to get grafted next spring, and I might have wished I'd have done it right now. I'm about out of Liberty Cyan Wood, unfortunately. Uh, this was a snow sweet. We'll see how it does. When it starts to show up with blight, it'll probably get grafted over. And the Mac Free, I think we're going to do right now. Because I don't want a tree that's this prone to fire blight in the orchard. So that's, uh, that's kind of the gist of how the fire blight control went this year. It's, the copper sprays were ineffective. Just too much rain. Torrential rain. The uh, vertical axis trellis largely unaffected but these trees really didn't bloom this year so we'll see when they start to bloom how they do wine sap somewhat resistant to fire blight not that the bacteria won't overwinter there it will but it is um, rather immune to the, the blight uh, causing dieback and cankers Here you can see on this Grimes Golden shoot blight and that has gone in to the main stem. I don't know if you can see the coloration difference. Probably not. But it's black underneath that shoot on this on this main branch and in years past I would just simply snip this off and leave this branch but it's got to come out and it it deforms trees, especially when you're on a trellis. It affects trees in bad, bad ways. And if Grimes Golden proves to be a fire blight magnet, uh, that's trouble. Because fire blight's definitely going to be a problem in this orchard. I am looking for highly resistant fire blight varieties, such as Liberty for the future of this orchard and I'll probably contact David Vernon down at Century Farm Orchards where he grows a lot of southern varieties and they deal with fire blight heavily down south as I do here in the Midwest and hopefully he can put me onto a few different trees to graft into this orchard so that I don't face this each and every year. I simply haven't the time to winter prune, spray, and then start pruning again in May for another month, 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shoots. I have burned two wheelbarrow loads of shoots already this year. I've probably got another two wheelbarrow loads to take off and it's devastating. But we'll keep a smile on. We're not uh, going to turn away from the apple orchard. We will make it work and at the end we will have a success story to help other orchardists should they ever go through this sickening problem of fire blight. Let's get to grafting.